So this is the one that's uh, here. Just because of time, I won't kind of. I'll just show you the link, and then we possibly when we send out the deck, you can kind of see it. But this is a hosting version. These guys in Mantis are really cool. They they have a hosted version that you can log in anonymously or create a user for it, and you can just play with the tool. And it has like bugs in it already. I think the queue comes in with like one or two bugs, and it's really cool. But the idea is this is it almost 100% mimics what we have installed. We've made tweaks into it, but this is a way that if you install the baseline from the open source, you get this. And it's kind of cool. So these guys are hosting it for you. You can play around with zero cost to you. For example, here, I just did this one the other night. I uh, created myself called Tester Wayne. Luckily, it wasn't used. And then, you know, I created, I created a couple of different things. I added some data here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the data. So keep in mind that that's what it kind of looks like on the screen. Once you edit, they unlock all these different fields. But this slide is what I think is critical to have in any bug tracking system. No matter what tool you use, you should have these, at least these, you can call them whatever you want, but these parameters, properties, values, or whatever you want to call them, okay? They're important to the workflow. I'm going to show you another slide that, yeah, nice to have, but any tool that you use should have these features. Even if you write them down on a piece of paper, you should have these, okay? The first one is a good title. Always, always, always underestimate. I don't know how many times I've read a title of something and people get a triage and they're like, no way we're going to fix that. And I'm like, I explain to them what the bug is and they're like, I didn't get that from the title. <laughs> Do not fear changing the title because you have an identity, a unique identity from Mantis. So you, the ID is not going to go away. Edit the title as many times as you can. Do it a hundred times. Get it good because people look at this screen and they read this one line without ever going underneath. Okay, so this is me telling you experience-wise, that's important. People will say, well, it's one of the features. I'm telling you, if you don't get past this hurdle, you're gonna have a hard time. Stats to reproduce, you know, and, and number them. Okay, people, I don't know how many times I've seen like paragraph sentences, of wishy-washy, I went to the car and I had a haircut and this. Only thing that's important, number them. Because when you number it, I find that it, you have to be extremely precise of know what's a, atomically a step. Because when you have a sentence, right, you can go on, you can keep talking, right? You can talk about flow. But when we put it down atomic steps, I know one's complete before I get to the next step. You get what I'm saying? It's putting your, your, your mindset in there. So that's another thing that I've picked up over the years, right? Get them into numbered steps, okay? Version, target, we talked about that before. Um, this is pretty good because what happens is you can isolate when something was found and also when you're going to fix something or when it was fixed. So when you go on the regression testing, like you said, Tom, okay, what if it serendipitously gets fixed, right? Well, what you do is you put the regression testing. We know we found in a previous version. I would say I'm okay checking off that, that it's closed because it got fixed by accident or anything like that. Report owner, who to follow up with. That needs to be there because you need ownership, <laughs> right? If not, on the hummus, bugs are bad, bad, because you can have a chance to follow them up and people can say whatever they want, right? So anonymous is bad, okay? Status, you know, I know people may say, oh, there's hurt feelings and we don't want people to know who, whatever. That's not true. Get them an owner. Status, this is how to track the bug. Remember we talked about the states? That has a lot to do with that. Severity, priority, we're talking about triage, remember Josh? We said, hey, okay, let's pick the ones up in the priority. Usually, the typical model is usually done, priority is the old way it used to be is that you have a combination of priority and severity, right? Priority is how important that bug is to you. Severity is how it impacts the system. So for example, I would say P1 tops priority. Different people have different levels. I would say like a crash or something like that would be a highest uh, severity bug. Low bug would be kind of like, okay, well, no harm, no foul, right? The reason that you have uh, priority and severity is because sometimes you say, I would argue if you misspelled your company name, very low sobriety, very high priority, <laughs> okay? So, right? So some people get this kind of confused and they only have one kind of indexing. I don't care what you kind of call it, but you kind of need something like that because reality is it's not always just one type of parameter that you're pivoting on, right? It's, if, are you just gonna fix things that crash your app? Maybe, but like the idea is like some of the other things, like if you've misspelled your company name, like, yeah, you might wanna fix that, right? <laughs> you have builds and you have versions, okay? But what happens is I like to have a, a version instead of a build number because I want the coders to code up to a certain point and then lock it down, call that a version, and we only test on that. Because it, it creates too many different, like if you do it, the sort of continuous integration, you don't know what's changed between the version. You can't track it down. 
you need reproducibility. So what happens is if you label that, use it, if you use source control, just label it as a version, and then I can pull that particular version down. I know exactly if that bug is in there, right? That's why I say version. The build number is there to help retrace the label, but you know, if you just use build numbers, it's going to be very difficult because it's very hard to reconstitute that. Also, I think it gives a level of expectation to developers that we're done, right? Like, I always get this point that, well, we weren't finished that feature, so don't test it, right? Like, this way you agree, you have some consensus, say, hey, that's that label. You don't even call it a version, right? You say, that's that label that we're gonna go to, right? Then, 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 then you can reconstitute. Reproducibility is huge to get something fixed. Comments, history trail, very useful. Some things that are nice to have. Uh, that one was spilling on the other one. I was debated about it, so I had it in both spots, I apologize, but really, probably, it's probably nice to have if I have the history of the status. Uh, related issues, this is one we're talking about. Usually most bug systems have the ability to create relationships, so you can have child-parent issues, you can have duplicates and other stuff like that. This space is cheap, just store them all, we can, even if you have duplicates later on. Um, screenshots, pictures worth a thousand words. I, this has saved my butt a lot of other times when people are like, oh, no, that never happened. Well, even if reproduce, I couldn't reproduce it, I have the screenshot to show that happened. Right? Okay, screenshots are very important. Platform environment, we're talking about OS, a lot of problems with like, okay, vendors. Android is very splintered because of that. You know, Google builds the OS, ODMs create the ROMs, right? Category, taxonomy, helps with blogs and fabrication. This one helps with things like, uh, we talked about the, the bad neighborhood door. Right, so what happens if you run a test later on, you say the categories, like in that login thing, we have an exorbitant number of bugs. It's a good place to look, right? This is the overall bug approach when I'm doing any type of bug tracking system, right? Record everything. This space is cheap. We're at a point now that that argument does not hold any water, okay? Databases can grow infinitely large, right? We have SAP is like terabyte database, like huge, right? There's, that should never be excuse. Record everything because you can't go back in time. Okay, worst comes to worst, you just don't look at it, you ignore it, you close it, whatever. It's always better to log everything. No issue, no issue number, don't fix it. This is important. If they didn't put it in the bug tracking system, you cannot fix it. Why? Because there's no tracking on it. So it's like fixing something that doesn't exist. It, it, it's gonna cause you more problems than anywhere. If somebody says, I'm working on it, tell me what bug issue number. If, it doesn't, if they can't give you one, say, well, you're not working on that. You, you kinda have to push on this, okay? Everybody kinda get that one? because there's no way to track it afterwards, right? Because what happens is you, if this other way, it's like source code, right? With the whole tracking stuff history and source code, I can go back and see what kind of changes people make. Because sometimes changes, what they do is they're not just fixes. Sometimes they change the way the application works, right? They change the flow. Oh, maybe, maybe a business user needs to go back and look at that manual, change the way the instructions work. We need a trail, okay? So I need, you, you gotta be like the soup Nazi here. <laughs> no bug number, no fix, right? <laughs> right? right? Triage all issues. Create priorities and queues. Remember, that's what we were kind of talking about before, yeah? Don't fix the first one because the odds are the ones that come in are not in order of priority. <laughs> UAT, verify UAT before closing. Remember, we were talking about the states? So let's talk about one more, one more, one more tool, okay? So test length. I'll just kind of show it to you, but the idea is here, there's test plans, and the idea is you can create test cases that are basically children of test plans. The idea here is you can run all these different test case scenarios, you'll get green light, uh, red light type of thing here. Uh, what happens is these are run, not run, and not applicable, I think. They're color-coded, color but the idea is a tool, different tools will have different visuals, but the idea is as a user, you can come in right away and see which tests you want to run and which tests don't apply and which ones succeeded or failed, okay? And then here is like you can get some statistics, like, you know, these are how many priority A, B, or C bugs have, tests have been run and failed or whatever like that, right? So once again, um, this is sort of, I always say that my approach with the test management tool, I always have, if I use this, I always have the current status because I can go in the system, I can figure out what test has been run on which particular build or, or label, right? So you can't get that out of Mantis. Do you understand? Because it only collects the bugs. You don't have the cases of the past, the positives, right? You need a tool like this to track what, everybody get that? which ones succeeded, because the bug tracking tools don't, you don't enter anything when you succeed. Um, Color-coded status, easy, to te easy for test case reuse. This is the greatest part, right? Like, I don't know how many times I've looked at a bug and I'm like, I see the status reuse, I'm like, 
that's awesome. We should run that every time. Like, guess what? You cut and paste it and you put it in the test lane. Right? So it's serendipity, right? At that point, right? Somebody, some tester is willing to create a test case for you and, well, it's free work, right? Guys, like, right? It's so hard. Hopefully it's not too hard to convince you to do that kind of stuff. And then it's the only way to tr truly estimate coverage, I think, is like, like I said, you don't know what you did. But one, you find out all the bugs. If you had a really good system and you don't have any bugs, well, you still don't mean, I don't know what the answer is. You didn't run any test cases or you ran them, they all succeeded, right? This will tell you that difference.